The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field, but while everyone was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, an, en an enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, no, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let anyone with ears listen. The Gospel of the Lord. Please pray with me. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of each heart be acceptable in your sight. Lord, you who are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. It's so hard to wait, isn't it, sometimes? It's so hard to wait. Um, I think most human beings have a little bit of difficulty with patience to a certain extent, some of us more than others. But pretty much of us struggle with patience at different and particular times, especially when it interferes with our sense of what is right or fair, or when things are a little inconvenient, or it's a struggle, or maybe even it's painful. When we sense something is wrong or feel what is wrong, we want to make it better right away. The definition of patience is actually the ability to accept delay, suffering, or annoyance without complaining or becoming angry. Are there a few more people like me now? <laughs> to be fair, there's nothing wrong with trying to make things happier or less painful. The problem comes when we try to control things or people that aren't ours to control. And maybe this is when we need the most patience or when we want to control things that might even pertain to us, but we can't change them even if we want to. Patience is very much about what is out of our control. It's about what we want to see or experience differently, but we can't bend to our will or shouldn't. And this makes us feel uneasy or uncomfortable or even sometimes in pain. In our fast American culture, change happens in the blink of an eye, and we're so used to getting what we need or we want quickly. Online shopping comes the next day. One time I needed a pair of shoes, a gold sparkly shoes for my daughter, and I went online and I found her size and I ordered them and they came within 12 hours. You can find things and you can have them come to your door ASAP. And if something doesn't exent, exist, you can start it or invent it or find someone who will. If you don't want regular whole milk, you can find almost any variation of milk you can imagine in the store. In fact, our cousin is here from Denmark, and um, one time our cousin came from Denmark and came to the grocery store for the first time and said, wow, there's a whole aisle just for chips. We have more than enough. We can find in the milk section skim, or 2%, or chocolate, or cream, or half and half, or even almond milk, or rice milk, and heaven forbid, the store that you shop 
runs out of your one particular little thing that you want. Heaven forbid you have to drink 2% instead of skim one week. Or you can have your own swimming pool to bask in, in your backyard in the summer when it's hot, although I've been reconsidering this one this summer. You don't have to wait for the neighborhood pool to open, even though that might be better for the environment Stores are open till all hours, some even 24 hours a day. And when it comes to being a group or part of a group, you can always find someone that has the same interests as you pretty much right away. Take a look on social media. If you disagree with a friend, that's okay. You can find someone else just like you by turning on your computer or your phone. No need for patience or civil discourse or even compromising our hymn or praise music preferences. Just find the group or the people that are more your fit, and you don't need patience at all. Except that we do. In the parable of the weeds today, the workers are immediately concerned about the weeds, which are out of place. They want to get rid of them quickly, But then they learn that Jesus teaches them that when you disturb the ground with pulling out the weeds, you might also uproot the good seed. Because it's all a system, it's all growing together, that which we consider bad and that which we consider good. You can't always destroy which is good. You can always destroy what isn't good in the end, but if you destroy what you perceive to be the weeds too soon and don't exercise enough patience, you might also end up destroying something that shouldn't be destroyed after all. Because sometimes I wonder, too, if Jesus didn't also see something in the weeds that maybe they missed. We need patience, and that's not just because it's a fruit of the Spirit. It's because love is patient. Love waits for people to grow and to blossom from what we see on the outside that looks like a weed, maybe into a strong, tall stalk of wheat. But we have such a sense of what's right and what's wrong, and we're so quick to look and to judge and to fix things that we don't see the good in. When we look at others, we often see what's on the outside and not as much what's in the heart. And even in the Bible, there are stories of people judging too soon. For instance, I always felt bad for that older brother in the story of the prodigal son where the prodigal son goes and squanders everything and comes back and gets a party and the good son has been good all along and he doesn't get a party. But what he doesn't realize is he has had the blessing and benefit of doing the right thing all this time. What we're celebrating is something that we thought was turning into a weed that finally turned into the wheat. And that's something to celebrate. Or maybe on a more secular level, we could consider someone like Darth Vader. Now hold on with me for a minute, but from the time of the very beginning of the movie, everyone wants to destroy Darth Vader, right? He's the bad guy, and the aim is to get rid of Darth Vader. Give the the world a sense, or the universe, a sense of relief from this evilness. But then there's Luke. When Luke finally begins to realize his Jedi powers, he's able to see something in Vader that no one else can. He senses the good in him. He tells Vader, I know there's good in you. Vader is really wheat among the weeds and needs to be cultivated and drawn out to what he was originally sown to be. And in the end, Luke's patience wins. Vader is able to die having separated himself from evil and turning to once again what is good. But we have such a sense of what we believe is fair and right, and this makes us quick to judge what is good and what is bad. God, however, sees us differently. God sees past our flesh and into our spiritual selves. Paul writes about our flesh and our spiritual selves and writes that our spiritual selves are glorified if, in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. Paul calls us to live as people of the spirit and not of the flesh, but as we've discussed before, each of us 
falls into the trap of sin. Each of us lives in the flesh. Each of us looks like a weed from time to time. But Paul also writes that we should not be afraid of this and not fall back into fear, but cry, Abba, Father. Because even this cry bears witness that our spirit indeed knows and trusts that we're children of God and therefore heirs of God. It's often easy to dismiss pain or struggle or use our promise of eternal life as a reason to disregard what isn't good, just ignore it, to toss away what is bad because we know greater things are to come. But here's the amazing thing about our God, the thing that makes God so incredibly, unexplainably amazing. God came into the world to live in this world, to live among the weeds, to show us patience, to teach us to watch and grow, to experience our hardship, so that in his resurrection, he would also know suffering and show us great patience and love. God lived among us as Christ and taught us to wait for the weeds and the wheat to grow so that we would not destroy what is good in the end. Now, don't hear me wrong here. This doesn't mean we should just stand by patiently and wait for things that aren't good or just to just evolve into good by themselves. Sometimes it's important that we act out on our faith we shouldn't ignore the weeds. But Christ came into the world to cultivate all people, to sow good seed and to take care of it, to tend it so that it wouldn't be killed by the weeds, that it would grow straight and strong even in the face of evil, watching and waiting to see what grows up to be wheat in the end. It's important for us to remember that we have no control over what will be wheat and what will be weed. We are only called to an attitude of patience and waiting, of tending and nourishing. We are flesh and we're called to live in the flesh. We are flesh and spirit. We are sinner and saint. And maybe in spite of this, we're called to grow among all of God's seeds, to wait and to watch. We are called to be patient and with love, watch for the time of the harvest. And it's with great love and patience that the harvest is full and plenty. Because God has sown good seed. We are created good. Let us love one another in patience without fear, knowing that we are heirs of God. Please pray with me. Holy God, tend our souls as we also tend to each other in your creation. Give us eyes and hearts to see the beauty and possibility that comes from what may originally look like a weed. Give us patience that is true love so that we may all come to know your glory at your final harvest. Amen.